Ghouls and Ghosts is one of the most challenging action games for the Sega Genesis, but of course it is. This is the sequel to Ghosts and Goblins, one of the most difficult video games ever made. The original Ghosts and Goblins was a massive commercial success in both the arcades where it was one of the highest grossing cabinets of 1986, and at home on the NES where it sold over 1.6 million cartridges, making it the 38th best-selling NES game of all time. So of course developer Capcom wanted to make a sequel. Leading development on that sequel was Takoro Fujiwara, the director of the original Ghosts and Goblins, and often referred to as the father of the survival horror genre for his role in the creation of the original Resident Evil. He was also the producer on just about every good Capcom game made in the late 80s and early 90s, including the Mega Man and Disney games. If anyone could repeat the success of Ghosts and Goblins, it was Fujiwara. And that's just what he did. The arcade game was called Dai Maki Amora in Japan, which roughly translates to Great Demon World Village. It hit Japanese arcades in October of 1988 and would go on to be the 8th highest grossing game in 1989. It released internationally in December of 88 and was retitled Ghouls and Ghosts. Capcom wanted to capitalize on the arcade success with a home release, so several computer versions were developed, but for consoles, instead of releasing on the NES, they went with the relatively new Sega Genesis. The game looks and plays great on the Genesis, sometimes the colors look more vibrant on Sega than they do on the arcade original. In both the arcade and on Sega, Ghouls and Ghosts plays similarly to the first game in the series with a few notable upgrades. The most obvious change is the ability to shoot upwards, or even downwards while jumping. Our hero, the brave knight Sir Arthur, has an expanded arsenal for this quest, so in addition to the weapons from the original game, he can now find a super sword or discus weapon. He can also find the magical gold armor that grants the ability to charge up your weapon for a special attack. Even with the gold armor, a single hit will still cost you your clothes, and a second hit will cost you your life. To find these upgrades, you'll need to know where to locate hidden treasure chests, but be careful. Some of them contain the dreaded magician who can transform you into a slow old man or a harmless duck. Just like in Ghosts and Goblins, you'll need to beat the game twice to get the true ending, but this time the second loop of the game is much more interesting, featuring new traps and obstacles, more enemies, and enhanced bosses. You'll also get a new weapon that can only be found in the second loop. While the original game was insanely difficult, Ghouls and Ghosts is a bit more fair. There are now checkpoints at the game's bosses, and the ability to fire your weapon upwards makes a big difference. If you find Ghosts and Goblins intimidating, don't let that scare you away from playing its more reasonable sequel. The game was a big success when it released in September of 1989, and it was the very first Capcom game released in North America for the Sega Genesis. Electronic Gaming Monthly Magazine rated it the best game of 1989. In modern times, players and critics still appreciate Ghouls and Ghosts for its intense but fair challenge. When Complex released their list of the top 100 Sega Genesis games of all time, they ranked Ghouls and Ghosts at number 27. If you'd like to play Ghouls and Ghosts on a modern platform, it was one of the games included on the Sega Genesis Mini. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges retro games are notorious for. Enemies attack from every angle and can knock you back with serious force. Many obstacles are difficult to navigate. A single mistake could be instant death. But what if I told you about tons of secret codes that can make this game easy? What if I told you the secret of the game's treasure chest system and showed you where you can find all of them? And what if I showed you the best way to defeat 
every bus. Even Loki himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, ghouls and ghosts. Before we jump into the main game, there are a ton of secret codes in this one, and the first one's in the options menu where you could select professional mode if you want more of the arcade experience, but we'll stick with the default. All you really need to do is set the music and the sound effect to the last one in the list, hold down A, B, C, down and left as you press start, and that will put you onto the Japanese version which really isn't all that different from the English one. You can see it still says player one ready in English, but if you wanted to see the Japanese ending of the game, I guess this is the code for you. Something a little bit more exciting, press up, down, left, right after the logo fully appears to enable the code. Then as you choose one or two players, if you hold down A, that'll take you to the first checkpoint. Then there's different directions associated with different stages, so up will take you to stage 2, and then up plus A will take you to the first checkpoint in stage 2. Down is for stage 3, so down plus A is the first checkpoint in stage 3. Left is how you get to stage 4, so of course left plus A will be the first checkpoint in stage 4. So that's how this code works. Right, of course, is going to be the code to take you to 5, which is the final stage. So, right plus A will take you to 5-2. And then if you hold down and right at the same time, that will actually take you to the final boss, which you'd normally have to play two loops of the game to get to. The last code is the debug mode. You're going to press A-A-A-A, up, down, left, right after the logo appears. You'll hear a tone, and when you start up the game, pause it, and then while you're paused, you can press C to advance the game one frame at a time, or if you just hold down B, you can actually play the game in slow motion, but the craziest part is if you press A and then you unpause the game, that will toggle on invincibility mode, which is sort of like you're playing with Game Genie. Just nothing kills you. Now, of course, you can fall into a hole and die, just like in most Game Genie situations. But yeah, that will make the game very, very easy. I certainly consider this cheating, but if you want to practice or if you're just sick of this game, it is a fun code to try out. All right, let's jump into it. As we start up the game, we have to talk about those treasure chests. So to find the treasure chests, you need to either walk or jump in certain areas. And you don't want to open all of the treasure chests, but you do want to make them spawn. Never open the first treasure chest that you spawn after a checkpoint. It'll always be that magician who will turn you into a harmless duck that can't attack if you have armor. And if you're in your boxers, he'll turn you into an old man. Now, the treasure chest that you do want to open, the second one that you spawn will have either the gold armor, if you already have armor, or it will have your armor upgrade if you've taken a hit. So there it is right there, there's the gold armor. And the gold armor will allow us to charge up our weapon for a super attack. The third treasure chest that you spawn will always contain a weapon no matter what your armor status is. So you may want to open it in such a way that you won't have to pick up the weapon if it's one that you don't like. Most of the weapons are decent in this game though. You can see what the super move of the axe does. The axe has very good range, but it's kind of slow, so it's not one of my favorites. And you'll also notice that sometimes enemies will drop weapons, 
So if you just want to farm enemies for a while at the beginning of the game until you get the weapon that you want, you can totally do that. As you pass through these guillotines, wait until they drop down and then walk under as they move up. And the fourth treasure chest that you spawn at each checkpoint will contain either a weapon if you have the gold armor, or it will be an armor upgrade. Bear in mind if you're playing on professional mode, the treasure chests will be a little bit different. As the bridge falls away behind us, that brings us to our first checkpoint, and even if you have to use a continue, you'll be able to come back to this checkpoint. These enemies are called sickle weasels. You'll need to contend with the wind here. Whenever the sickle weasels are in tornado form, you won't be able to damage them, but if they stop for a moment, you can take them out with whatever weapon you have. Since we hit a checkpoint, the treasure chests have reset themselves, so the first one has the magician in it again. You don't have to open the treasure chests, you can just spawn that chest, and then the second one will have your weapon or armor upgrade in it. So since we have gold armor, the second chest has a weapon. And there's actually two paths that you can go here, so we're taking the right path this time, but whenever we play the second loop, we'll take the other path. So we're gonna climb up this ladder. Watch out for that enemy up above that will puke down on you. If you just stand slightly off center, you can just shoot upwards and take him out. Clear out those enemies and make your way to the top. Right here, there's another chest if you wanna try to get a different weapon because we're about to fight our first boss. And there's also a checkpoint here, so if you die, you don't really have anything to worry about. If you have a long range weapon against the Statue of Terror, you want to go just right enough so that it starts moving, and then you can just keep jumping and attacking from the left side and you'll actually be scoring hits on this guy. You will easily be able to avoid its fireballs by jumping over, and then once it's destroyed you'll be able to grab a key and we'll be on to the second stage. Stage 2-1 is one of the most difficult in the entire game. First of all, there's these bouncing rock turtles, which can't be destroyed, although the ones that are walking on the ground can, so you want to shoot those right away when you see them. The bouncing ones, well, you need to keep moving to the right to get past this part, but you may need to pause for a moment or take a step to the left so that they'll bounce over your head. Once you get to these bridges, you need to jump from the middle of the first one, go right past the edge of the second one and jump, jump up to that little bridge, hop across it, and then just jump at the end there because you should be able to get up even if you fall in. Go almost to the end of that bridge and then quickly jump across. If you do fall in, you need to get out of that quicksand very fast because if you hit the middle of it, that's instant death. The pile of skulls marks a checkpoint and you can see where they all came from. It's our first red gargoyle. This one you can just run past, it's no big deal since we've already hit the checkpoint. If he comes up behind you, turn to the left and shoot him. And then there's an earthquake in this area. You want to jump over the first earthquake platform and then you can land safely on the middle of the second set. Over here you want to watch out for the fires that appear at the top or the bottom of the screen. They're going to spawn a fire pillar. So you'll want to wait until that goes away, and you may want to keep shooting at the end of it because a bat will always appear wherever the end of that flaming pillar is. So watch out for the bats, navigate the flame pillars, and that'll bring us to the boss checkpoint. This boss is Infernomo, also known as Cerberus. He always appears on the right side and jumps over you first, so you want to shoot up. Then attack him on the left side because he'll jump back over you to the right, but you do need to duck as he goes across from the right to the left. He's pretty easy to take out if you know that pattern. And that will bring us to stage 3-1, Baron Rankle's Tower. And now for something a little bit different. This one's an auto-scroller, and you'll be very happy that we can shoot upwards in here. You may think you can just avoid those mud armor enemies that appear on the sides, but if they reach the floor, they'll start moving towards you. You can spawn a chest on the right side, but that one's the magician, so we're not going to open it. We just want to spawn it so that we can get the second, third, fourth chest, etc. Those are the good ones, unless you're playing professional mode, or sometimes the second chest could be another magician. Yeah, professional mode is a little bit harder. They say it's the arcade difficulty, 
but since there's a few more checkpoints in the arcade, it's probably a bit harder on Genesis. Over here we can spawn a chest and that gave us back our gold armor, so it's nice to see that again. There's another chest over here, it would be a weapon, but we need to hurry to the right here. There's a spot where we need to break through a wall, and if we don't break through it fast enough, we'll be stuck on the left side and we will definitely be crushed. So make sure you hurry across there, taking out these strange floating bear head monsters. And you may need to wait for a moment here, but that will bring us to a checkpoint. This part is difficult. If you get too close to any of these mouths, that's instant death. So you need to duck under the first one, and don't wait too long here because that tongue will start moving backwards before you jump onto this platform. Over here, don't jump on that left tongue, but jump onto this one. You need to be ducking there, or you'll be instantly killed. Then you need to jump down to one of these platforms before you end up in that mouth. If you're having trouble with that, you could try to wait on the treasure chest for a moment and try to time your jump better. That part's tough. Over here, keep jumping to the right. You'll need to jump over to the tongue on the right side, but wait until it comes out and you need to be ducking again. And then you can just walk off the edge of that one to drop down onto the lower tongue. And that brings us to the boss. Mistral wins. I definitely remember this guy from Kirby. Anyways, don't stand directly above him and have him below you for very long because this thing can move upwards very fast and that would be bad. So instead, you want to stay about as far away from it as you can and just try to hit it whenever you have the opportunity. If it's flying over your head, aim upwards and shoot at it. If it's to the left or right at you, pelt it with whatever weapon you have, and just keep chipping away at this thing. If it becomes electrified, it can't be damaged during that time, so just avoid it. And something you can try, if you go all the way to the right, it will always come over there and attack you, so you may be able to bait it onto the right side. That's another strategy you can try. That brings us to stage 4-1, the Crystal Forest, which I would say is one of the easier stages in the game. There's a chest we can spawn here at the beginning, so that's chest number one. But something that you need to pay attention to here is the ceiling. The crystal ceiling can damage you, so you need to be super careful not to jump into it. Whenever you're walking on the upper platforms, just don't jump. That's all I can really say about that. I don't think we want the lance, we'll stick with this blue fire. And we'll keep heading over here to the right. Take out that enemy that's spitting at you from the right side, and you can open a chest over here to the left. Keep heading over here to the right. I like the upper path, just remember not to jump, except in that one spot where you have to jump. But you won't have the opportunity to fall and instantly die like you do on the lower path. Carefully jump over that enemy after you take him out, and that brings us to our first checkpoint. And stage 4-2 is the Crystal Cave. There are a couple of chests right here at the beginning, but be careful not to hit your head on the ceiling. So there's a second one already. And okay, I guess we have the Discus weapon now, which actually might be pretty good in this area. Be careful not to fall through those spikes. Those are instant death. Although, if you're hit by an enemy and you have invincibility frames, you can actually go through them. You can see how good these discus are here, although they're not actually great for the boss of this stage. So if you have the opportunity to pick up a different weapon, you may want to take it. But I'll show you a way to beat this boss using this weapon anyway, just in case you're in that situation. Carefully make your way past the hands. Use whatever tactical advantages you have, and you can see there's another chest. And down here, I like to jump over to this platform, and instead of jumping to the left, just take out this enemy and jump over to the right, then quickly jump off a few platforms, and you'll already be at the boss, so that's a little bit of a shortcut. This guy's called the Gatekeeper, and you need to take out these five orange pods on the side of it. If you have the discus, you're going to have to get above each pod and jump and shoot downwards at it. Although with a lot of the other weapons, some of them have a wider hitbox, or like the dagger shoots on several different levels, the dagger is really good against this boss. You want to just take out the middle in that case, and then you can just hang out on the left and right side and shoot to the right or left to take out the other pods. 
we'll be able to do that whenever we play the second loop. Here with the discus, we need to be very careful to watch out for those orange snakes that come out of the side. Those cannot be destroyed. And whenever those pods are active on the side, just keep jumping up in the air and shooting downwards, and eventually this guy will go down. And that brings us to stage five, the castle of evil demons. So we're already at the end. Yeah, but it's not gonna be easy. This stage is tough. There are a ton of those red gargoyles in here. Make sure to spawn that first chest, but don't open it. And here's our first gargoyle. Something that you can do whenever you fight these guys, you want to jump and shoot one over its head and then quickly shoot another one. Whenever you shoot at the gargoyle when it's not moving, that will make it jump up in the air and that one that you shot first will hit it. So shoot one over its head and then one below, so like one, two. You'll get a free hit that way. Try to lure this guy to the end of that platform and shoot upwards at him. That's a very good way to take out that gargoyle. And we'll be able to spawn a chest here with a dagger. Yeah, that's gonna help. All right, we can even charge it up. The dagger super move will give us a second character which will mimic our moves, so that's kinda nice. And you just wanna be patient with these guys. Usually whenever you're ducking, it'll go right over your head and you can shoot it as it comes above, and if it drops down on your level, that's your opportunity to pelt it with a whole bunch of whatever weapon you have. Try to fight these guys one at a time. If you're trying to fight two or more, that's gonna get dicey. There's another treasure chest down here. We don't really want the lance. We'll stick with the dagger. Make sure to take out that enemy before you jump over to the right, but watch out for that dragon that can spawn behind you. Here's another weapon, we'll stay with the dagger. And remember these guys from stage one, you want to be slightly off center because they'll vomit on you if you're right below them. So shoot them from below, but not directly below. Take out this guy as you drop down and that will bring us to the last checkpoint before the final boss checkpoint. And you can see there's our first treasure chest, and we have to climb this ladder. This part's tricky. You want to watch where those maces are going to come from the side, and stop or move down if you have to. When you get to the top, jump across. If you duck, this guy won't be able to hurt you. You need to hit that demon in the face to kill it. And once we get over here, we're going to climb up and have to face two Statue of Terrors. Whichever one is lower whenever you climb up the ladder, I usually just go after that one right away, start shooting it, and whenever it goes up, get underneath and just start rapidly attacking it. Once you've taken out one of them, taking out the other one is a lot easier. You can stay farther away, which will make it a good bit easier to jump over the fireballs. Just wait until it shoots one, jump up and hit it as you're avoiding the flames. Over here, there's more of those purple demons, which look very much like the final boss of the first game. If you stay ducking, they won't be able to hit you. Although when we get to the second loop, or if you're playing on professional mode, they will be able to shoot a single fireball that'll be able to kill you, so keep that in mind. But for now, you should be safe if you're ducking. Then we have a representation of the Mishra winds again. There's three of them, but if you don't move too far to the right too quickly, you won't have to fight more than two at a time. Try to take out that left one as soon as possible. And I like to kill all three of these guys before I move forward. They will chase you for a while if you don't remove them. Over here we have some more treasure chests we can pick up. There's one there and another one right there. And then another one of those Statue of Terror heads. Yeah, this game does not let up in the final stage, but we're almost to the last boss. So we're getting close. Stay as far away from this guy as your weapon will allow and pelt it with some daggers while avoiding the enemies that come from above. And here is Beelzebub. Beelzebub always appears on the right side, so stand up on this platform and get ready to pelt it with some weapons. Then quickly move over to the left to avoid its green balls that it throws. It's going to turn into a swarm of insects and reappear right above you here, so you'll be able to rapidly shoot it. And that makes that guy pretty easy, but if you know this series, you know that beating it just one time is not enough. We're going to have to play a second loop, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult this time. 
I'm also going to show you some different strategies. These strategies will probably work in the first loop as well, although there is a new weapon that we'll be able to get in the second loop. So whenever we use that new weapon, those strategies will obviously be unique to the second loop. There are some differences that you'll see and I'll try to point those out as well. So here we are, we're back to stage 1-1, execution place, and you can see the enemies are coming fast and furious here in the second loop. So to get the Psycho Blaster, you must have the gold armor. You want to make at least one treasure chest spawn, that's going to have the magician in it, so don't open it up. And then the next chest that you spawn will have this angel inside, that's the goddess of battle, and she will drop this new weapon, the Psycho Blaster. It's pretty good. It's very fast, it only has a medium range, but it doesn't have a charge ability, so there is that I guess. It's pretty good, but you don't have to use it until you get to stage 5-1, and when you make another chest spawn it will have a new weapon in it for you to try, so for now you can switch over to whatever weapon you want but whenever you get to stage five make sure you put on that psycho blaster because if you kill beelzebub without it you'll be sent back to stage 5-1 i definitely like the blue fire for the final boss of this stage you could do something pretty good when you charge it up against that guy so we'll try to put that strategy into play and we'll just keep pushing our way to the right so wait for the guillotines to go down and then go underneath them. And that will take us to the first checkpoint of the second loop. Just like before, the wind will blow against you and we'll have some sickle weasels to deal with. This part I didn't notice being any more difficult than it was in the first loop. So try to avoid those weasels. And whenever we get to this part of the floating island, the previous time we took the right path, so we're going to take the left path this time. I think I prefer the right path, but the left path is all right as well. Head over here, watch out for those tentacles that pop out of the ground, and there's a treasure chest that you can find over here, which of course contains the goddess of battle right now, who wants to give us the psycho blaster. But for now, we're going to use the blue flame so I can show you that blue flame strategy for the boss. And this brings us over to where the two paths merge. And you can see there's that enemy that will vomit on you. And there's another one up here. So watch out for that guy. Take him out. And then head over to the right. It's time to fight the Statue of Terror again. Now if you have the blue flame, you want to charge it up against this guy. Whenever he leans down, you launch it at him. And you will get multiple hits and you can take this guy out in about two shots. So a very fast kill on the Statue of Terror using the charged up blue flame. Pretty good. And this brings us to stage 2-1, and yes, in the second loop, this one is noticeably more challenging. As you head to the right and try to get under these rock turtles this time, you'll notice that there's this blue wall you have to deal with now. So that wasn't there before. It doesn't make a big difference, but this part was already tough and we didn't need it to be any harder. So keep making your way to the right. Take out the enemies that are walking. There are a lot more this time. And watch out for those bouncing rock turtles. Sometimes they come in pairs now. Over here it seems like there's more enemies that are flying at you as you need to get over the broken bridges but you want to navigate them exactly the same way that we did before in the first loop. So you don't want to fall in, but it is okay if you fall in when you're near the top of the hill. You should be able to get out of that. Just don't fall in when you're over the low part. You'll definitely be instantly killed. Over here, remember you can duck under the flames, and that brings us over to the checkpoint. The second part of the stage is way easier than the first. As usual, you want to try to quickly get past this gargoyle, duck under him as he flies over you, and with the blue flame, you'll notice when you're ducking, if you throw it, you'll still be able to hit him. So that's kind of an interesting way to deal with those guys. Different weapons will give you different opportunities against certain types of enemies. 
As usual, you need to get through those earthquake platforms, jump on the middle one of the second set, and over here you can spawn a chest if you're looking for a different weapon or if you need to get an armor upgrade. Look out for the fire pillars. Seems like this part is not that much more difficult than it was in the first loop. Watch out for these enemies that spit eyeballs at you. And just keep taking out those bats whenever they spawn at the end of the fire pillars. Keep heading to the right, and we've made it to the boss. So Infernomo or Cerberus takes a few more hits in the second loop, but he still spawns on the right side, so hit him as he jumps over you, and as he jumps over again, duck as he goes to the left. If he does a whole bunch of fireballs, you'll need to try to get between those. That's a much trickier attack, and you can usually kill him before he does that in the first loop, but in the second loop, since he takes more hits, you're likely going to have to deal with that attack. The first part of stage three really isn't too bad. It's that second part that's really tough. So as usual, there's a treasure chest that you can spawn on the right side. So make sure to make that one appear just in case you need to get an armor upgrade, which you'll be able to do with the second or fourth chest. Head over here, take out these enemies, of course, right now, if we open any of those chests, it's just going to be the Psycho Blaster, so we don't need that right now. But if you did get hit and you need to get your armor back, it's important to keep making those treasure chests spawn. You never know when it's going to happen. Head over here to the left, take out these mud armors. That one's crawling at me now, so I need to duck down and kill it. We should be able to get our armor back over here. There's another chest we can make spawn. So that's the fourth one with an armor upgrade in it. Looks like we're going to be okay, but we need to move quickly here. We're running out of time to get through this wall. There's certainly more bear heads this time. And we cut that pretty close, but you can see you can walk under those stalactites. Those won't actually kill you. Keep moving to the right. You may need to wait for a second and you'll be able to jump up here. And we've made it to the checkpoint, and oh yeah, we gotta do this part again. This time we have to jump over some blue flames, as if this part needed to be more difficult. Make a treasure chest spawn over here, and the third chest, we'll try jumping on top of it to help time our jump this time. You need to take out those dragonflies and make sure you're ducking whenever you go under that platform above. Sometimes you'll be able to just walk off the edge of the tongue to get down onto these moving platforms, but other times you'll have to jump. You'll need to make a split decision based on what's going on. Make sure to duck to get under that purple platform in the background, and just walk off the edge to get down to the tongue, and you'll be on your way to the third boss. Of course the boss takes several more hits to kill this time, but a lot of the tricks that worked the previous time will work again here. Whenever it turns electrified, you can't damage it. The best time to hit this guy is when it's swooping over your head, or when it's over to the left because of the slant in the terrain. You don't want to stand above it for very long, and oh, got me there, but that's okay, we'll be able to get our armor back whenever we pick up the key. And that brings us to stage 4. Stage 4 being one of the easier ones, and it's not that much more difficult here in loop number 2. Don't forget that there's a treasure chest at the very beginning. You want to make that one spawn so that we'll be able to get our gold armor with the next chest. We'll head over here. I like to take the upper path, but remember not to jump. And there's that gold armor upgrade. So now we can charge up our weapons again, and we'll be able to get the Psycho Blaster if we want it. Take out that snake that appears from the wall from far away and make sure to kill this guy that spits blue balls at you from down below. Jump up on the top, and just keep making your way to the right. A lot of things spit projectiles at you here. It can be difficult to dodge them all, especially with the crystal ceiling above. But as long as you stay far away from the enemies, you should be able to hit them with your dagger, or most of the weapons. If you have like the sword or something, you probably should get something else. Of course, the sword deals more damage than most weapons, but the range is the much more important factor in this game. And we're here at the checkpoint. 
This time, since we have the dagger, we can shoot the hands from above. So that's another good strategy you can use, but remember not to hit the crystal ceiling, of course. And we can try to do a little shortcut here. If you get hit by that enemy right in that position, you'll get knocked through those spikes and you'll be dropped all the way down here. So that's a faster way you can get through and there's a treasure chest right there. So if you're not worried about losing your armor, that is something you can try. Attack this hand from this position on the left side and then head over to the right. We're almost to the end again, but we have these green platforms to deal with. Just drop down onto this one, ride it all the way to the bottom, take out that enemy, do a big leap of faith, and be ready to jump when you get to the bottom. Now this time, since we have the dagger, we'll be able to do the easy pattern against the gatekeeper. Quickly kill that middle one, and then duck down here and just start rapidly shooting. You'll take out those two pods very quickly. Then we're going to do the same thing over here on the right. Get down here, and just keep shooting. Be careful not to walk off the edge though, that's instant death. And once that one materializes, we should be able to kill it. Come on, pod. And there you go. So that's the easy way to fight the gatekeeper, but you need to have a weapon that can shoot down that low for it to work. And just like that, we're back to the castle of evil demons. It seems like there's a few more dragons to deal with this time, so try to clear as many of those as you can before you climb the ladder, but they just keep on spawning, so there's not a whole lot you can do. Over here, we're going to use those techniques that we learned to fight the gargoyles, but if you can get the Psycho Blaster, the Psycho Blaster is amazing against the gargoyles. So whenever you can, you need to pick that up. We need to get it before we finish this stage. If it looks like you're going to get to the boss and you don't have the Psycho Blaster, you need to like die or something. You must have it before you get to Beelzebub. The first step to getting it though is we need the gold armor. So of course we spawned the treasure chest at the very beginning. Now we're trying to carefully tangle with this red gargoyle. If we get hit, we won't be able to get the gold armor and that will be counterproductive. As he comes over to the left, we'll be able to take him out and then we'll be able to hit this treasure chest. That will get us the gold armor and the next chest that we open will have that psycho blaster. There's one up here on this level, but we should probably deal with these gargoyles first. Ugh, we spawned both of them. Well, that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but just keep using those same techniques. Remember that you can duck underneath them. And now we need to spawn this treasure chest. It's right there. And that gives us the weapon that we need. This weapon is going to be very good here in stage five, so you want it anyway. You can see it will quickly take out these enemies, just like a knife through butter. So use it to take out the dragons and the pig warriors that vomit on you. And you should have no problem getting to the top here. It's also very good against those statue of terror heads that we have to fight. Well, we've made it to the checkpoint, so we're getting pretty close to the end. If you don't have the Psycho Blaster yet, you need to figure out how you're going to get it. You don't want to be sent back to the beginning of the stage. The Psycho Blaster will make this demon easy to defeat. You can duck under his attacks, mostly, but it is the second loop this time, so if you don't kill him fast enough, he may shoot a single fireball that can hit you when you're ducking. So try to get rid of him fast. Over here you just want to get under these statue of terror heads and attack them with the psycho blaster. And we did get hit, but we should be able to get our armor back right over here. So we'll make this chest spawn. And this is why you want to always be spawning those treasure chests, you never know when you'll need them. And once again we have to fight two of these demons. The first one you can kill very quickly right as soon as it spawns, and then you just have to deal with the other one on the left. You could just try to run away from that guy, but it will make it harder to fight the Mistral Winds if you do that. Of course, you can just try to run away from them too. I like to at least take out the first one, and since we don't have the gold armor, we do want to spawn that chest over there and quickly pick it up. 
psycho blaster your way through this last statue of terror head and then we'll be at Beelzebub who's a little bit different here in the second loop. He still spawns in the same spot on the right side so get in a few hits over there. Watch out for the green balls that he shoots at you but the second position is going to be over here this time. So try to hit him in the second position. If you don't kill him quickly enough he may go very far to the left even farther than you can actually jump to. And that brings us to Loki, or Lucifer in the original game. This guy is actually pretty easy. You just need to jump from the right foot up to this knee and aim upwards and just start attacking. When you're on that knee, you deal three times as much damage and Loki won't stand a chance. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten ghouls and ghosts. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Congratulations! And then it says that Loki restored the ghouls and ghosts world which had vanished three years ago. Is that something we actually wanted? To bring back that world? Well, I guess it means that Princess Prinprin isn't dead anymore. So we'll take it. It then goes on to explain that we were able to beat the game because we got improved weapons and we were able to charge them up with magic power. Um, yeah, we just beat the game? You don't really have to explain that to us. As the story comes to a final close, it asks what ultimately became a rhetorical question. Is Arthur's battle truly over? No. No it's not. The series will continue with Super Ghouls and Ghosts, which this time would be exclusive to the Super Nintendo, so it was a little bit of a pivot for Capcom there. Of all the games in the Ghosts and Goblins franchise, I think this one is my favorite. I just love the flexibility that being able to shoot upwards and downwards gives you, and they unfortunately take that away for Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Of course, in Super Ghouls and Ghosts you get the ability to do a double jump, and there are more armor upgrades than just the gold armor. So they certainly compensated for taking away the ability to shoot upwards and downwards, and it may have been a little bit too easy if you can do that. At this point they show you some random scenes from the game. It seems like this would be a good time to give us some credits, but instead it just freezes as though credits should appear, and they don't. So, kind of a weird ending here, but hey, I guess that's what it is. So which is your favorite Ghosts and Goblins game? Do you like the extremely difficult original? This one that's a little bit easier? The more advanced one on the Super Nintendo? or maybe even Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, the modern reboot? Let me know in the comments. I think there are a lot of players out there that have played the original Ghosts and Goblins and were so scarred by how difficult that one is that they never actually tried the sequel and if you're in that boat, you should give this one a shot. Having more checkpoints, like a checkpoint at every boss, really makes the game a lot more player friendly. And just the better weapons and all the extra abilities that you have in this game just make it a lot more fun. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Ghouls and Ghosts and return the world of Ghosts and Goblins to the way it was three years ago, for better or for worse. If it did, make sure to give it a like, 
and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more biblical demons trying to corrupt the souls of man. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.